This story begins a year after Frieza gained his new power called Black Frieza. The Saiyans Son Goku and Vegeta ended up being defeated by Frieza, who had demonstrated the power of his new transformation. And with that, Frieza defeated both Saiyans alone. After the defeat of Goku and Vegeta, the two Saiyans decided to train to learn how to control the full power of their most powerful transformations, which were Son Goku's Ultra Instinct and Vegeta's Ultra Ego. The two Saiyans asked for Whis's help and Beerus with the training, and after the Saiyans trained with the Divine Beings, they managed to reach a certain level of power. And using this power, the Saiyans Goku and Vegeta managed to defeat Frieza in his most powerful form. Beerus and Whis praised Son Goku for being the one who fought the most against Frieza, and Vegeta didn't like that at all. According to Beerus and Whis, even though Goku and Vegeta had achieved great power, both Saiyans had not yet reached the full power of Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego, which left the Saiyans surprised. Goku and Vegeta then decided that they would have to stay stronger to dominate the Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego and thus defeat Frieza if he returned. Whis and Beerus began training Vegeta. Goku ended up being called by the Daishinkin himself to reach the full potential of Ultra Instinct, something that was not very pleasing to Vegeta because Daishinkin ended up denying his request for training and Vegeta had to settle for Beerus and Whis. Guys, before continuing this epic story, make sure you leave a like to help the channel and also subscribe to the channel, guys, so you don't miss any news. 30 years had passed since the day Son Goku and Vegeta began their training to reach their full power. Vegeta was never far from his family as Beerus and Whis trained the Saiyan on planet Earth itself. But Goku stayed away all these years, and as incredible as it may seem, Chi Chi, Goku's wife, didn't think it was bad because the previous threat to Frieza almost killed her children. And if it was necessary for Goku to go through long years of training so that that would never happen again, Chi Chi would hope that her husband would become very powerful to protect her and her family. What no one knew was that Vegeta and Frieza had already met, but they didn't fight but became allies because Vegeta no longer wanted to be treated like Goku's shadow, so he decided to take on the role of God of Destruction of the Seventh Universe. And to do that, he needed to remove Beerus from his post. And Frieza wanted Beerus and Goku to be killed. So they allied themselves and prepared to defeat Beerus and Goku so that Vegeta and Frieza could achieve their goals and desires. In the Seventh Universe Currently in the seventh universe, it was possible to see that a party was taking place at the Capsule Corporation as it was Bola's birthday, who was now an adult and even had a son who was much more human than a Saiyan. What no one knew was that the plan of Vegeta and Frieza would start at the party and Vegeta, who had a plate of food in hand, was already starting the plan. Vegeta said, Are you sure this will work, Frieza? I don't think this drink will be able to weaken Beerus, said the Prince of Saiyans with a strange drink in his hand. Frieza said, don't worry, I've already tested this, and if you mix it with food, Beerus won't even notice. This will work on him as it worked on me. Our power levels aren't very different. Do this quickly, as I'm almost at the end, planet Earth. The Emperor spoke through Shouter to Vegeta, who then turned it off and stored the device in a place that no one would notice. Vegeta thought, so it's finally time to take over the seventh universe and become a god of destruction. And with that, I will no longer be in Kakarot's shadow, thought the Prince of Saiyans with a wicked smile on his face. But soon that smile disappeared, and Vegeta went to prepare a plate for Beerus and took the opportunity to put Frieza's drink in Beerus's glass. Which upon seeing the plate full of delicious things, he started eating without caring of offering it to anyone. And then Beerus drank the liquid from his glass without noticing that Vegeta had added something. Minutes later, Beerus began to spit blood, and when that happened, everyone present raised their heads and saw Frieza's spaceship enter the Earth's atmosphere, and then Frieza himself came down and faced Beerus. Frieza said, As I said, the plan would be a success, and judging by the blood in Beerus's mouth, I was absolutely right, said the Emperor while looking at Beerus, who was very serious and irritated because he was unable to release his energy. And every time Beerus tried, he spat out blood as if something was preventing Beerus from releasing his power. Beerus said, What did you do, Frieza? Beerus asked, irritated with what was happening at the moment. Frieza said, Me? I didn't do anything. Vegeta did it. He placed a drug that makes a person weak and unable to use their key temporarily. And since the one you drank was made especially for you, it is billions of times more powerful. And now that you are weak, we are going to finish you off and dominate Seventh Universe. Vegeta will take his place as God of Destruction and I will be the ruler of the Seventh Universe. The Emperor said while looking at Beerus. As soon as Frieza finished speaking, it was possible to see that everyone was surprised by Vegeta's action. Vegeta said, 
Sorry, Beerus, but I'm tired of you thinking you're superior and always talking about the damn Kakarot, said the Saiyan Prince before firing a key spear at Beerus that left him badly injured. Upon seeing that scene, everyone at the party advanced against Vegeta, but the Saiyan defeated everyone with extreme speed and even knocked out his family members and removed them from the place because he didn't want them to get hurt. When he did this, Vegeta returned and prepared a powerful attack that would put an end to Beerus and Vegeta without hesitation, fired the energy attack that when collided generated an explosion. But at the same moment, Vegeta felt Beerus' energy and along with his energy, Vegeta felt the energy of the person he hated the most. And Frieza also felt this energy and gave a big smile. Frieza said, It looks like you decided to join us, isn't it, Son Goku? Said the Emperor with a smile on his face. Goku said, I really didn't think you would be so low as to ally with Frieza, said the Saiyan before turning his hair, causing the dust around him to move away, revealing that Goku no longer had fair skin, but rather a blue one, just like that of Angel's, and his hair was white, with a more silver tone, and not. As he was also wearing the same outfit of the Angel's, the same one Whis wore. Whis thought, So he completely mastered the power of Ultra Ego, and thanks to that he practically became an Angel. And with the help of my father, Goku was able to stay that way. I'm glad to know he's reached that level of power, thought the angel when he saw Son Goku staring at Vegeta, who was looking angrily at Goku. Vegeta said, I don't care about his opinion, Kakarot. I'm tired of everyone seeing me as the second strongest. So I'm going to finish you off and Beerus, and then I'm going to take over as God of Destruction of the Seventh Universe after finishing off Beerus. So get out of my way, Kakarot shouted the Saiyan Prince while looking at his rival, who was looking at him seriously. Goku didn't say anything. He just took a step forward and at the same moment he disappeared and reappeared in front of Frieza, punching him in the stomach. Goku threw Frieza towards the Capsule Corporation and then threw a kick at Vegeta who defended himself. But he ended up receiving a point-blank key attack that made him move away from Goku, who didn't even appear to have made an effort to do that. Vegeta, after receiving that attack, became angry and transformed into a Super Saiyan and then advanced towards Goku and began attacking his rival with a combo of attacks. But Goku easily dodged all the attacks and defended some in a simple way which enraged Vegeta who transformed into Super Saiyan 2 and tried again to attack Goku who again dodged the attacks. But it didn't take long for several beams of ki to go towards Goku, who dodged them all with simple but refined movements showing the results of his three decades of training. Frieza advanced towards Goku and Vegeta, did the same thing, and with that they both started attacking Goku who was now in defensive mode. And with a powerful blow, Vegeta and Frieza hit Goku, throwing him away, thus forming a curtain of dust that soon dissipated. And with that, Vegeta and Frieza saw that Goku hit his clothes, removing the dust, showing that it was no big deal for him, which made Vegeta and Frieza irritated by that. Vegeta and Frieza transformed. Vegeta assumed his Super Saiyan God form and Frieza transformed into his Golden form. And seeing this, Goku did not show any expression. The Saiyan remained calm in the face of Frieza and Vegeta's transformation. Vegeta and Frieza advanced towards Goku, attacking the Saiyan from all different directions. Goku ended up receiving most of the attacks and seeing an opening, Vegeta and Frieza used their powers and fired a powerful wave of ki that ended up destroying a large part of the city behind them. And not only that, but the attack ended up crossing several planets close to Earth. But even though this attack was powerful, it did nothing against Goku. The only thing that happened was that the upper part of his clothes had been destroyed by that attack. Goku said, This combined attack was powerful and really destroyed a lot of things. Then we solved it with the Dragon Balls. Now I better solve the problem and the threat that you two are to the seventh universe, said the Saiyan. And soon a purple aura appeared around Goku along with some golden spears. In the seventh universe. Currently in the seventh universe, more precisely in the Capsule Corporation, it was possible to see Son Goku with a new aura similar to that of Ultra Instinct. And a few meters away from him was Vegeta in his Super Saiyan God form. And next to him was Frieza in his form titled Frieza Golden. Both Vegeta and Frieza were surprised by that new form similar to Ultra Instinct, but more powerful than the Ultra Instinct that Goku used 30 years ago. Goku calmly and slightly serious expression was something that was making Frieza and Vegeta irritated. So both beings raised their powers and advanced towards Goku. Vegeta started trying to punch Goku, but the Saiyan dodged the punch and landed a right hook on Vegeta. Then Goku grabbed Frieza's leg, who had tried to kick him, and using his strength, Goku simply threw Frieza to the ground before landing a kick on him. In the next instant, Goku did a backflip, dodging a kick from Vegeta, who began to punch Goku. 
but Goku was defending himself easily, and upon seeing that, Vegeta concentrated his energy in the palm of his hand and tried to fire an energy sphere at Goku, who held Vegeta's hand, causing a small explosion to happen between their hands. In the next second, Vegeta received a powerful punch in the abdomen, causing him to spit blood. Then the Prince of the Saiyans took a kick that made him fly and crash against a piece of the Capsule Corporation. Goku was standing with his back to Frieza. The Emperor, upon seeing this, took out a small ring and put it on his finger, and then Frieza fired a laser beam in the direction where Goku's heart should be. The laser beam hit the target, and that made Frieza smile. But his smile disappeared in a matter of seconds when he saw that his attack had been useless, as it had not even gone through Goku's skin. In the next second, Frieza felt his body being lifted by a kick given by Goku who punched the Emperor's face, causing it to hit the ground, generating some cracks after Frieza's fall. Goku said, This trick may have worked years ago, Frieza, but they no longer work on me. It's very disappointing to see that the great Emperor Frieza needs a dirty trick to be able to hurt me said the Saiyan, and now also the angel provoking Frieza who upon hearing this became very angry and advanced towards Goku. Frieza began to attack Goku with all his might, giving a sequence of blows at a very high speed. But Goku was easily dodging it, and once in a while he landed a blow on Frieza, who became increasingly irritated. The Emperor was not alone as Vegeta soon appeared performing several blows on Goku. The Prince of Saiyans was in his Super Saiyan Blue evolution form, attacking Goku at high speed such a speed that Vegeta punched Goku in the face, and he moved away, giving Vegeta and Frieza an opening who managed to take the opportunity to attack Goku together, landing several blows on the Saiyan and then finishing Goku with an energy attack that was capable of hurting the Saiyan. Goku, seeing that he was injured, decided to fight seriously, and with that he stood still, facing his two opponents, and then he closed his eyes and sighed. Vegeta and Frieza, seeing that, didn't think twice before attacking, since Goku had his guard down, and at that moment, Goku was going to receive the combined blow from his two opponents. The Saiyan disappeared and soon reappeared behind Vegeta and Frieza, who suddenly felt as if they had been hit several times in a fraction of a second. Vegeta thought, When did he reach this level of power? I've trained for the last 30 years, and yet he's still more powerful than me. No, I don't accept that, and I never will, thought the Prince of Saiyans, starting to release his power. Driven by pure anger and humiliation for being so weak next to Son Goku, Frieza thought, I won't be defeated. I wasn't defeated by Beerus in the past, and I won't be defeated by a mere monkey who should have already died along with his others of his species, thought the Emperor, becoming extremely angry. And just like Vegeta, the Emperor began to release his power that was driven purely by anger and the intense hatred he had against Son Goku. The Saiyan who defeated Frieza several times in the past and had already even killed the Emperor. Vegeta, when releasing his full power, ended up activating the power of Ultra Ego at a higher stage than the old Ultra Ego he had. At the moment the Prince of Saiyans activated that power, the upper part of his clothes were destroyed, and a mark of God of Destruction appeared on his chest similar to what had happened to Topo during the Tournament of Power. And Frieza, who had also used his full power, ended up activating his Black Frieza form, which was also at a higher level than the old one as Frieza now had total dominance about the transformation and the power it gave him. Goku, seeing that Vegeta and Frieza were in the most powerful forms, thought about facing the Emperor and the Prince of Saiyans, but Goku realized that the power of the three at that moment was destroying planet Earth just by being present in the place. So Goku put his two fingers to his forehead and teleported from that place, taking Vegeta and Frieza. Soon the three appeared in the empty world where the tournament of power had taken place something that left Vegeta and Frieza surprised as Goku had not even touched them for them to be teleported from the planet Earth to the empty world. Goku thought, luckily I learned to teleport people to other locations without having to touch them, even though there was no key present in the location. At least now planet Earth is no longer at risk of being destroyed. Goku thought before sighing and looking at Vegeta and Frieza who had already put themselves in a combat stance. And seeing this, Goku also put himself in a combat stance as the real fight would start at that moment. Goku this time was the one who started the fight, advancing towards Frieza and Vegeta, who upon seeing that also advanced towards Saiyan Goku. And the moment everyone was close to each other, they started a sequence of blows that collided, creating a wave of a gigantic shock spread throughout the void world making it tremble because of so much power released at once. Vegeta was now attacking Goku with powerful blows that were charged with the energy of destruction that made his attacks at least 10 times more powerful and deadly than normal. 
but for some reason the blows that were hitting Goku didn't have the effect they had. Vegeta was waiting. Frieza already had a key aura around his fists that had the ability to destroy other people's key, making the other warrior useless. And just like the energy of Vegeta's destruction, Vegeta's corrosive key, Frieza wasn't working on Goku and none of them knew why or how he was doing it. Goku at that moment was receiving several blows from Vegeta and Frieza, but thanks to his training, the Saiyan was developing a defense technique that used the power of destruction and this technique was being very good in being able to nullify the power of Vegeta and Frieza. Goku suddenly pushed Frieza and Vegeta away using a key pulse and then advanced against Frieza, landing a series of punches on the Emperor's face. After doing this, Goku ended up dodging a punch from Vegeta that hit Frieza. Goku took the opportunity to land an elbow on the Emperor's face. Vegeta's stomach along with a left hook. Then Goku fired two beams of energy at close range at Frieza and Vegeta, causing both to be seriously injured. Goku thought, My energy won't last long in this state, so it's time to stop messing around and start hitting them hard. Goku thought and then advanced towards Vegeta, starting hand-to-hand -hand combat against the Prince of Saiyans. Vegeta was doing well until he felt his energy of destruction being gradually drained and this caused Goku's aura to increase gradually. Goku knowing that Vegeta would not stop fighting as long as he was conscious, Goku began to throw very strong and heavy punches making Vegeta feel his bones being broken with each blow and after a few seconds Vegeta ended up being knocked out by a blow from Goku. Frieza who was far away observed that fight and seeing the perfect opportunity he gathered all his power at once in the center of his hand and concentrated, creating a very powerful spear between his hands, and then he saw that Vegeta ended up being defeated by Goku. Frieza finished smiling. Frieza said, Vegeta, I'm sorry, but I can't miss this opportunity to kill Son Goku, and you will be my bonus. So don't take me wrong, and just die for my ambition and my reign as the new god of destruction of the seventh universe, shouted the Emperor before firing his attack towards Goku, who upon seeing the attack, heading towards him took on a very serious expression, and soon the energy beam exploded as it got close enough to Goku and Vegeta. Frieza said, It looks like I finally finished them off, and now I can finally dominate the entire seventh universe, and in the future all twelve universes, the Emperor said with a big arrogant smile on his face, already imagining what it would be like to rule everyone. Goku said, You shouldn't call yourself the winner without knowing if Frieza really won the battle. Your arrogance will always be your downfall. Goku said, appearing behind Frieza, with Vegeta on his shoulder, as if he were a sack of potatoes. Frieza, upon hearing Goku's voice, the Emperor turned and tried to land a blow at Goku, who easily dodged it, and then created a key attack and fired at Frieza at close range. But the attack was so powerful that it ended up killing Frieza. And how Frieza had disappeared, Goku thought that the Emperor's body had been disintegrated and with that his mission was complete. Goku said, when I go back home, I'm going to have to spend some time with Chi-Chi as an apology for being away from home for 30 years. And I hope she cooks something for me because I miss eating her food. Goku said before sighing and disappearing from that place without noticing a small portal closing in the corner of that world. In the seventh universe, one week had passed since Son Goku's battle against Vegeta and Frieza who had teamed up to defeat Beerus and thus rule the seventh universe together. But Vegeta and Frieza did not expect that Goku would return and face them both. Goku was now fine, more powerful, and having spent 30 years training, the Saiyan ended up defeating both enemies and saving Beerus' life in the process. Goku with his new power that was on the same level as an angel's power, the Saiyan was able to face Vegeta and Frieza at the same time using his maximum power. Goku didn't have many difficulties because the moment Goku decided to end the battle, he defeated Vegeta and Frieza with great ease. With Son Goku's victory, the Saiyan took Vegeta back to the seventh universe, where Beerus almost eliminated Vegeta. But Bulma begged Beerus to spare her husband's life, and when she saw that he wouldn't do that, Bulma asked Goku to save him. Her husband, Goku accepted and stopped Beerus from taking Vegeta's life. And to ensure that he was no longer a threat, Goku ended up using his power and stealing a large part of Vegeta's powers, leaving the Prince of Saiyans weak enough that Beerus allowed him to live. But if Vegeta tried something like that again, he would be eliminated by Beerus, who would not hesitate to disintegrate Vegeta. 
After solving all the problems caused by Vegeta and Frieza, Goku returned to his home, leaving everyone surprised with his new appearance, especially his wife, who admitted that she found the new appearance very beautiful. And as Goku had returned, his family had a party just among friends. And even though Bulma's family did not attend the party, they paid for everything that would be used at the party. As a thank you for Goku saving Vegeta's life in the 11th universe. Currently in the 11th universe, it was possible to see that the Pride Troopers were completing yet another mission, saving an entire planet from destruction at the hands of a fleet of conquerors who had conquered several planets and only did not dominate that one because the members of the Pride Troopers protected the planet and eliminated everyone who tried to conquer that planet. Among the members of the Pride Troop who were on the planet, it was possible to see Jiren, the most powerful fighter in the 11th universe. He was sitting on a pile of debris meditating. But soon Jiren stopped meditating when he heard Topol's footsteps approaching him. Jiren said, Mission accomplished again, right Topo? I hope we didn't have any casualties on the civilian side. Jiren said while looking at his friend who, in the future, would be the next god of destruction of the 11th universe. Topol said, Yes, like everyone else we managed to minimize casualties on the civilian side. But now I have something new for you. One that has to do with Son Goku, spoke Topol the current leader of the Pride Troopers and also the future God of Destruction of the 11th Universe. Jiren said, About Son Goku, what happened to him? That was so important for you to discover something about him. Jiren asked as he stood up and looked at the leader of the Pride Troopers with a certain curiosity regarding the Saiyan who had defeated him in the past during the Tournament of Power. Topol said, According to Vermont, that Vegeta guy who ended up defeating me in the Tournament of Power joined forces with that evil being called Frieza, and the two came up with a plan to eliminate Mr. Beerus, the god of destruction of the Seventh Universe. But Son Goku, who had been training for the last 30 years together with the High Priest, appeared and defeated Vegeta and Frieza with tremendous ease, and this was something surprising. Since Vegeta and Frieza had a power that matched or even surpassed the power of a god of destruction, and from what Mr. Mormont told me, Son Goku's current power is as great as that of the angels. Topo spoke while looking at his friend who upon hearing that was very surprised to learn the evolution of Son Goku who acquired so much power in just 30 years of training. Chiren said, I knew that Son Goku's potential was very great, but I never thought that he would be so powerful to the point of being able to reach the level of being as powerful as an angel. During the last few years, I've been training by Margarita, and I've already managed to overcome Vermont's power. But I don't think I'm capable of defeating Son Goku. And that, that makes me very excited about facing him. Jiren said with a smile on his face of pure excitement upon hearing that. Something that surprised his friend, who was happy to see the excitement on Jiren's face. Topo said, It seems that he has no limits in terms of evolution, and that is something very surprising. But you are also much more powerful than 30 years ago. Maybe you are more powerful than Son Goku, but to know that, you two would have to fight again. And who knows, maybe this time you'll be able to defeat Son Goku. Topol said as he truly believed that his friend could achieve the feat of defeating Goku in his current state. Jiren said, You're right, and I also believe I can defeat Son Goku. But to be sure of that, I'll have to face him again. Topol. Call Mr. Vermoth and tell him that I would like him to take me to the seventh universe so I can duel against Son Goku. Jiren said with a smile on his face as he looked at Topol who just nodded in agreement. In the seventh universe. Currently in the seventh universe, more precisely in Son Goku's house, it was possible to see that the Saiyan was lying in his bed next to his wife who seemed to be younger. And all this because Goku ended up using his power to make his wife Chi Chi more jovial. And he did this to her, repaying the wonderful night they had together the night before. Goku had regained all his powers and after that within minutes, Goku was outside his house. Goku said, Hmm, did Jiren come to the 7th universe with Mermoth and Margarita? What do they want here in the 7th universe? Well, I don't think it's something very important, so I'll just ignore it. Said the youngest angel Goku, feeling the energy of the three beings reaching the seventh universe. Goku ignored it because it probably wasn't something he should know. And if it was, he would end up finding out. Some time passed and Goku had just finished eating his breakfast. And as he did, he also ended up feeling the energy of Beerus, Vermoth, Wis, Margarita and Jiren coming to the right of his house. Something that made him sigh and go outside of his house. And upon arriving outside in a matter of seconds, a pillar of energy appeared in front of Goku's house, who had a cup of coffee in his hand. Goku said, How could I help you today? 
because I don't think you came to have breakfast at my house. After all, you didn't leave the 11th universe just for something like that. Especially you, Jiren. Goku said while looking at everyone, especially Jiren, who was surprised by the appearance that Goku now had. After all, it was a very different appearance from his old one. Jiren said, You've changed a lot since the last time I faced you, son Goku. I remember that you had black hair and your skin was more tanned. But now your skin is bluish, white, and your hair is silvery white. And that reminds me a lot of when you managed to use the power of Ultra Instinct to its maximum potential during that fight of ours where I ended up leaving as the defeated. Jiren said as he approached the new Angel Goku and greeted him. Goku said, I must say that you are also very different from 30 years ago, Jiren. At that time, you wouldn't take the initiative to greet me for anything. But now your personality has changed, and apparently your power has also increased. And seeing that you came to my universe, I could tell that you want a friendly duel, am I correct? Asked the new angel while looking at his old enemy Jiren, who smiled at Goku. Jiren said, I see that time has made you smarter. Yes, I came to the seventh universe to be able to face you. After all, 30 years ago I was defeated, and now I want a rematch. Jiren said excitedly, and this made Goku smile. And then a kind of dome was created in the sky, and they both disappeared and reappeared inside the dome created to withstand the blows from Jiren and Goku. Upon seeing where he was, Jiren moved away a little, and after a few seconds, Jiren advanced towards Goku, who just took a step to the side, dodging the attack. Then Goku threw a punch in Jiren's stomach, followed by a sequence of blows, finishing with a kick to Jiren's face, throwing him against the dome. Jiren, after receiving the attacks, managed to recover quickly and advanced towards Goku, but faster than before, landing a punch on Goku who, despite receiving the blow, counterattacked with a kick to Jiren's stomach, who held Goku's leg and then threw it against the dome. Goku was going to continue the fight against Jiren at the same pace, but when he looked lightly at his house, he realized that his wife was waking up, and he didn't want to anger Chi-Chi by fighting close to home. So Goku released his power using the same way he used against Jiren. Vegeta and Frieza, and advanced towards Jiren, who didn't even have time to react, when he received a sequence of blows that ended up knocking him out. Something that surprised Vermont and Margarita, as Jiren was not a weak opponent, and being defeated like that left everyone surprised. Goku took Jiren close to Margarita, and she completely healed him. Jiren woke up at the same moment. Goku said, Let's fight again, Jiren, but not today, because I don't want to bother my wife. Goku said while looking at Jiren. Jiren said, Let's go, but not with this angel power. If I'm going to face you again, it will be against your Saiyan power. Jiren said, and Goku sighed. Goku said, Sorry, that's impossible. From the moment I became that way, I completely lost my Saiyan powers, and as such, my transformations as well. Goku said with a sad sigh, as he liked his old Saiyan transformations. Whis said, About that... I can help Mr. Goku recover his Saiyan powers, said the angel with a calm smile on his face, surprising Goku with his words. In the seventh universe. Currently in the seventh universe, more precisely at the home of Son Goku and his wife Chi Chi, it was possible to see that all those who came to planet Earth with Jiren were in the room talking. Chi Chi was not surprised to see several different beings. She just thought it was funny, the fact that a clown was a god of destruction. Chi Chi couldn't hold back her laughter, and Vermouth even thought about saying something to threaten her. But the god of destruction of the 11th universe knew that if he tried to eliminate Chi Chi, the chances of him getting out of the dungeon alive, 7th universe, were extremely low, as Goku would end his life. As Jiren was stronger than Vermont, and Goku had easily defeated his most powerful warrior, so Vermont knew he would not be an opponent worthy of Goku. Chi Chi said, Let me see if I understand. Goku and this man called Jiren faced each other, and Goku won easily. Then Goku told him to fight again, but Jiren said he will only face Goku again if he uses his Saiyan power. But Goku, after managing to master the true power of Ultra Instinct, he lost his Saiyan powers and got new ones as an angel, similar to Whis and this woman called Markarita. And according to Whis, he knows of a way for Goku to recover the Saiyan powers he had. I sum it up well, or did I forget something? Chi Chi asked after summarizing everything she heard to see if she had understood everything correctly. Goku said, yes, dear. Apparently, Whis has a way to recover my Saiyan power, but I thought that was impossible since the high priest had told me that when I got that way, I had transformed into a being superior, and with that I had lost all the Saiyan power that I had. And even though I tried, I couldn't transform into a Super Saiyan or any other Saiyan transformation that I had. Goku spoke as he remembered that he was no longer able to access his Saiyan power. 
which said, Indeed, but you can still access the Saiyan power that you had in the past. But to do so, you will have to recover your Saiyan tail, and with that your old powers will return. And don't worry because you won't lose your angel power. In reality, you would practically be a hybrid between an angel and a Saiyan, and probably all your Saiyan transformations will be more powerful than before," said the angel while looking at Son Goku who was impressed by that. After all, he thought that recovering his Saiyan tail was something impossible to happen. Goku said, My Saiyan tail? I thought it would be impossible to get her again. It's been so many years since my tail was cut that I thought I would never have it again, much less that I would need it to recover my Saiyan powers. But how are we going to do that? Goku asked while looking at his wife who was the only one present in the place who had ever seen him as a child when he still had his tail. Chi Chi said, If Goku just needs to recover his Saiyan tail, then we only need Shenron. After all, he has the ability to grant wishes and I think he should be able to make Goku's tail come back. In reality, I thought that you just hadn't done it until today because you didn't want to accidentally lose control by turning into the giant ape like you did in the past. Son Goku's wife said to her husband, who only now realized that he could have recovered his tail in the past using Shenron, but he never thought about that in the past. Whis said, In the past this would have been possible, but now it will not be possible to use Shenron's power to recover Goku's tail, since now his power is at a higher level, and thanks to this, Shenron's power is useless. But I can help resolve this in a very simple but somewhat painful way, said the angel while looking at Goku who was thoughtful. But he soon sighed as he looked at Whis. Goku said, I accept it even though it's painful, unable to withstand the pain and it would be worth it to recover my Saiyan power, because I'm also wanting to get my Saiyan power back. I admit I missed the transforming into Super Saiyan. Goku said while lightly scratching the back of his head and looking at Whis. Whis said, Since that's how it is, then let's go, said the angel getting up and leaving the house along with the rest of the group, except Chi Chi who stayed at the entrance of the house. Chi Chi said, Goku, get home before lunch or at least before dinner, the woman said to her husband who just nodded positively and soon he and the rest of the group disappeared in a pillar of energy. World of the Supreme Kai Currently in the world of the Supreme Kai it was possible to see a pillar of energy appearing in the place and from that pillar Goku's group left and soon they saw Supreme Kai who was drinking tea at that moment waiting for everyone's arrival as Whis had already warned the Mr. Kaio. Supreme Kai spoke. You took a long time. I thought you wouldn't need me anymore to help Son Goku recover his Saiyan tail. Supreme Kai spoke calmly while looking at Goku. Goku said, What are we going to do now? I don't think the Supreme Kai has the ability to make me recover my tail, and along with that my Saiyan powers. I don't want to offend you, the Supreme Kai. Goku said it because he didn't believe the Supreme Kai could help him recover his Saiyan powers. The Supreme Kai said, Don't doubt me, I can bring your tail back using this. Supreme Kai spoke showing a cup of tea, something that surprised everyone except Whis and Margarita. Whis said, That tea has properties to make a person look young, but without changing their appearance itself. In a simple way, by drinking this tea, Mr. Goku will return a few years, but will still remain with his current powers in his body, untouchable. This tea only provides the feeling of being younger, recovering the vigor of the Saiyan power, and thus Goku will be able to recover his tail or a part of it. The rest is the part that will hurt, said the angel as he took the tea and took it to Goku, giving it to him and with that Goku drank the tea, and seconds later he felt strange in his body, as soon as he could see that his tail had grown a little. Goku said, well now I have my tail again, but I don't feel my Saiyan power, and my tail is very small. So Whis, what's the next step for me to recover my Saiyan power? Goku asked while looking at the angel who soon smiled and pulled out a huge pincer from completely nowhere. This surprised Goku and left him scared. Whis said, In a simple way, you will fly at full speed while I clamp your tail using these clamps, and this will make your tail grow long enough, and when that happens you will immediately feel your Saiyan powers return. So let's get started soon, said the angel while looking at Goku who just sighed and turned to Whis who used the tweezers to trap Goku's tail. The next angel began to float and propel himself in the air, and little by little Goku's tail began to grow until after a few seconds, it reached the ideal size revealing that, like his hair, his tail was now silvery white. And at that exact moment this happened, Goku stopped floating and simply transformed into a Super Saiyan, but remained with the same angelic appearance. Goku said, 
It looks like we can fight now, Jiren, as I've been away from my wife for the last 30 years, and I want to reward her. So I ask you to come with everything at once because I want to end this fight quickly. Asked the hybrid who transformed again, but now in a Super Saiyan blue form. And seeing this, Jiren just smiled at him. Jiren said, I understand. My wife also doesn't like it very much when I'm away from home for a long time. Especially now that my first child was born. She's already pregnant with our second child. So let's go with everything, Son Goku. Jiren said as he prepared himself and released his power, causing a flaming white aura to surround his body. Something that made Goku smile. Goku and Jiren stood still, but after a few seconds, they both disappeared and reappeared in front of each other, clashing their fists, generating an explosion of energy. Soon the two warriors came out of a smoke screen and began to face each other, exchanging a sequence of punches and kicks at high speed, generating other explosions. But these were smaller than the first explosion. Goku then managed to open a gap and threw a punch at Jiren, who managed to turn his body and punch Goku in the face with the back of his fist. But Goku managed to use the strength of that attack to land a kick to Jiren's stomach. Making you take a few steps back, Goku and Jiren smiled at each other when they saw that they were on the same level at that moment. But it didn't take long for both of them to smile at each other and move forward again, starting an exchange of blows between them, where Goku quickly attacked Jiren, landing several blows on him. And Jiren landed a few blows, but the ones he landed were very powerful, making Goku let out a few grunts of pain. Jiren also let go sometimes. But it didn't take long for Jiren to accidentally open his guard, and with that Goku landed a powerful blow to Jiren's stomach, followed by a right hook that sent him flying and before he knew it, Goku appeared in the sky above Jiren with a Kamehameha ready. And without hesitation, he fired his attack at Jiren who crossed his arms in an X to defend himself. With that, a large wave of energy hit Jiren who went against the ground and luckily Whis and Margarita were there because if they weren't, that world would have been completely destroyed by the blows between those two and Goku's Kamehameha would have ended the rest of the world. After that attack, Jiren was quite injured, but he could still continue the fight. But when looking at Goku, Jiren realized that Goku was still too strong for him, making Jiren sigh as he was still not as good enough a level to make Goku fight using 100% of his power. Jiren said, I think we can finish here. You're even powerful than you ever were, Son Goku. So it looks like I will have to intensify my training to an extreme level. So get ready because I will reach your level of power, and I will defeat you. I can say that as a promise. Jiren said after getting up and approaching Goku, greeting him as a sign of a good fight. Goku said, I'm looking forward to facing you again, Jiren, so become more powerful, and don't think that I won't train either. After all, I feel that my Saiyan power hasn't reached its maximum potential yet. So don't be surprised if our next duel, I appear with a new transformation. Goku was excited as he held Jiren's hand and squeezed it, just like Jiren himself. Beerus said, It seems that now these two have become rivals. Two rivals with gigantic power who belong to different universes. That's something you need to see, commented the god of destruction of the seventh universe upon seeing that scene. In the sixth universe, Currently in the 6th universe, more precisely on the planet of the God of Destruction of the 6th universe, it was possible to see Vados the Angel responsible for that universe. Sitting on a tree branch while eating some food such as vegetables and fruits, in front of Vados was her staff which showed a large holographic screen where you could see the 6th universe. Vados was carrying out an inspection of the universe to ensure that everything was okay and that his universe would not be destroyed again during a possible tournament of power. Vados realized that in recent years her universe was slowly being destroyed and she didn't know why. What Vados knew was that this had been happening for a few years and it was because of an evil energy. As Vados didn't know what to do, to stop that evil energy the angel was thinking about how to solve it. And as Champa, the god of destruction of that universe, just ignored her words. Vados would have to solve it alone, and if she didn't solve it, Champa would complain. Since according to him, the god of destruction's duty was to just destroy some planets or any threat to the universe itself. Anything other than that was the angel's duty. Vados said, hmm, Even though I thought of different ways to solve this problem, they would only delay the process of destroying the planets at the hands of this evil energy, which it's very strange as it seems to have several origins in different parts of the 6th universe, and some of them seem to be at the limit of the universe. The evil energy did not affect the 7th universe, which is a good thing." Vado spoke while analyzing the hologram that showed all the planets in the 6th universe, and the evil energy that was spreading and destroying the universe little by little. Some planets had already been completely destroyed by the evil energy. 
Thinking and analyzing a little what was happening, Vados was trying to find a solution to that problem related to the gradual destruction of that universe. But soon an idea crossed her mind, one that could save the universe. And the only thing she would need was with the help of her twin brother, who lived in the seventh universe. Vado said, I was thinking of ways to handle the situation in different ways, and they were all quite complicated. But the answer was in my face the whole time, and it was the simplest and easiest to do. I just need to gather all seven Super Dragon Balls, and then invoke Super Shenron, and with that I can make the sixth universe get rid of this mysterious evil energy. And not only that, but I will make all the planets return to normal, and all those who lost their lives because of this energy will also come back to life. And with this, I will have single-handedly avoided another crisis in the sixth universe, since my god of destruction only knows how to eat and sleep. Vado spoke to herself while looking at the holographic screen that immediately began to search for the presence of the Super Dragon Balls. And as Whis had implemented a radar in Vado's stuff, it would be easier to find the Super Dragon Balls. After a few minutes, the radar manages to find the location of all the Super Dragon Balls, and upon seeing this, Vados went to the Super Dragon Balls. But upon seeing the first one, Vados noticed that the Super Dragon Ball was strange, because it had details dark for a large part of it. And upon seeing that, Vados was surprised and at the same time shocked, because upon feeling the energy of the Super Dragon Ball, the Angel realized that the evil power that was destroying her universe was being released from the Super Dragon Ball, and that made the Angel worry. After all, Super Shenron was a being whose power could easily bring a destroyed universe back to life. So if Shenron was corrupted by evil energy, not only the sixth universe would be in danger, but also all the other universes would be in danger, and would likely be destroyed by the power of an evil Super Shenron. Vado said, The Super Dragon Balls were responsible for the evil energy, but why are they like that? No, maybe only this one is corrupted, and the others are not. I have to go and see the other spheres. Vados spoke and then went after the other Super Dragon Balls, and when Vados found all the Super Dragon Balls, she saw that each one of them was corrupted, and this made the Angel worried. Luckily, it was possible to reverse the process and purify that energy. Vados said, Damn, all the Super Dragon Balls are corrupted, and they are the ones releasing this evil energy throughout the Sixth Universe, and without them, it will be impossible to purify the entire Sixth Universe. As I am an angel, I could purify the universe itself, but it would take a long time, and most likely the energy will spread faster than I can purify it. So I only have one choice, and that is to purify all the super spheres of the dragon, and then I will summon Super Shenron and bring the sixth universe to its original glory. Vado spoke determined to purify the seven super dragon balls to cleanse all the evil energy that was in the sixth universe. Vados concentrated and sat in a lotus posture in front of the Super Dragon Balls and then began to release golden energy and began shooting at the spear. The energy that Vados released was completely pure and with it, the evil energy that was inside the spear, little by little, it began to be purified. But the more energy Vados sent to the spear, the more necessary the amount of energy was to purify the spear. And when Vados stopped a little, she saw that a large part of the Super Dragon Ball had already been purified. The angel smiled when she saw that her work was working, but suddenly the Super Dragon Ball began to corrupt again at a high speed, becoming more corrupted than before, something that caused Vados to be in shock. Vados said, How is this possible? The evil energy has already permeated the Super Dragon Ball so much that even though I purify the spheres, if I stop in the middle of the process, it becomes even more corrupted again, and the more energy I use to purify, the more energy is needed. And the worst of everything is that, even though I'm an angel, I don't have unlimited energy. And purifying the evil energy from the Super Dragon Ball is a huge waste of energy, and that's very bad. I would have to ask for help from the other angels, but I doubt they are willing to help me. And the only one who could probably do that would be my brother, Whis, and possibly Son Goku, who has now also become an angel. Wait, Son Goku is also an angel now! As Goku has just become an angel, he has the purest energy among all angels. And because he has a pure heart, he is my best chance of saving my universe from the destruction of this evil energy that the Super Dragon Balls are releasing. Vado said, now much more excited to see that she had a chance to prevent her universe from being destroyed by the evil energy of the Super Dragon Balls, which until now was unknown as to why they were in that state. 
Vados with a plan in mind, the angel returned to the planet of the god of destruction of the sixth universe. But before that, she took the seven super dragon balls and placed them in a corner of the sixth universe, with several sacred chains binding them and reducing the quantity of evil energy that was being released by the super dragon balls. Upon arriving on the planet of the god of destruction, Vados immediately woke up Champa and said they would go to the seventh universe, something that Champa did not like, as he did not want to go to his twin brother's universe. In addition to being angry at having been woken up by his angel, and even though she said it was for the good of the sixth universe, Champa was still angry and didn't want to go. But after Vado said that he would eat some delicious food and sweets, he was excited to go to the seventh universe. And with that, Champa and Vado went to the seventh universe. In the seventh universe. Currently in the seventh universe, if more precisely on planet Earth in Son Goku's house, it was possible to notice that he was currently lying on the grass outside his house. Together with his wife and the two were spending a calm and relaxing moment right among the two something they started doing with some frequency. But the couple's piece soon ends when a pillar of energy appears in front of the Saiyan's house, who immediately opened his eyes and saw the pillar of energy, something that made him sigh as he already knew he had work to do. Goku said, it seems like they need my help, but I didn't expect it to be so quick. Now that I was almost asleep, Goku said before sighing, as he was almost asleep unlike his wife who had managed to sleep some time before. Chi Chi said, it seems like they need you now since you're half an angel, different from when you were a Saiyan warrior. She spoke in a fun way as she looked at the angels who had arrived at her home seeking her husband's help again. Goku said, what do you need this time, Wiss? Do you want me to help solve any of Beerus' problems again? He asked while looking at the angel of the seventh universe, who just shook his head. Wiss said, This time, I'm not the only one who needs your help, Goku, said the angel, and then his sister continued speaking. Vado said, Actually, I would like to ask for your help this time, Mr. Goku. I need you to help me save the sixth universe. Vados soon bowed slightly close to the Saiyan, who was very surprised by that. In the seventh universe. Currently in the seventh universe, more precisely in Son Goku's house, it was possible to see that the newest angel was inside his house sitting on the sofa with his wife by his side, and in front of them was Whis and Vados. As Whis was inside the subject, he was drinking tea and eating cookies, while his sister was dealing with serious matters with Son Goku. Goku said, Vados, could you repeat what you said before? I understood the part about the destruction of the sixth universe, but I didn't understand why the Super Dragon Balls are responsible for this. After all, they were responsible for saving several universes in the past, and were also responsible for bringing planet Earth from the sixth universe back to life. So I don't understand why they would be responsible for the gradual destruction of the sixth universe. Goku asked, as he had only understood part of what Vados had said. Goku did not understand why the Super Dragon Balls were gradually destroying the sixth universe. Vado said, I also didn't know why it was happening, but after I talked to Whis, I realized that the Super Dragon Balls had a different energy than when we first used them to restore planet Earth in my universe. Then, as a result, the energy of the spheres changed, but very little, almost impossible to notice. But after we used the Super Dragon Balls to bring all the universes destroyed during the Tournament of Power back to life, I analyzed it and realized that there was a big change. But it didn't seem to be a big deal at the time. But now they are releasing a corrosive evil energy that is destroying all the planets in the sixth universe and taking billions of lives. And the worst thing is that I don't know why that is happening or why the spheres have been corrupted in this way. Vado said before sighing, as she really had no idea why the super spheres were that way. Chi Chi said, Maybe the super dragon balls absorb the evil of the beings that brought back to life. Bulma once told me that she was afraid that Shenron would become corrupted if he absorbed the evil of the beings he revived. So I would say that this could have happened with the Super Dragon Balls, and now the energy they originally released has become an evil energy, which is destroying the sixth universe. And even if you try to purify the evil energy, it won't work because the amount of evil energy is much greater. It will only work if you release an amount of energy so pure that no evil energy will be able to corrupt it. But this is just my view on the situation, it shouldn't be a big deal, since I'm just a mere mortal. Chi Chi spoke, expressing her opinion on the subject, and her knowledge regarding the Dragon Balls that were similar to the Super Dragon Balls. Vados, upon hearing the opinion about what had happened with the Super Dragon Balls, was surprised by the deduction of a mortal 
Chi Chi's words made a lot of sense, and this made the angel and her brother slightly irritated with themselves, because it was something so brilliant to the point that only a genius would know the answer. In reality, it was quite obvious if someone knew the Dragon Balls and how they worked. Vado said, Actually, what you just said makes total sense, and I even feel like an idiot for not having thought about it before, and I spent 30 years learning about the Super Dragon Balls and the Dragon Balls that some Namekians created in my universe, and yet I couldn't understand enough to reach that conclusion, Vado said before sighing. The angel was very disappointed in herself for not having been able to reach that conclusion before without the help of Chi Chi, who was just a mere mortal. Goku said, Okay, now we know how the Super Dragon Balls got the way they are at the moment, but now how do you intend to purify all that evil energy? Because I'm sure you're here because you need me to do this. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't be here right now asking for my help and explaining to me about everything that's happening in the 6th universe. So what exactly do you want with me, and what can I do to solve this problem?" The half Saiyan asked while looking at the angel who took a deep breath before speaking. Vado said, I came to ask you to go to the 6th universe and use your power to purify the 7 Dragon Balls. Before you ask me why I'm asking this of you, when I could do this, it is because you are an angel who was born recently, so to speak, and therefore your energy is purer than that of an angel like me. And since you already had a good heart when you were just a mortal, your energy is already much purer than a newborn angel. So I think you must be able to do what not even all angels can do at the moment. Only my father could do this, but he's too busy, and his duty is to Zenosama and not the universes that we should take care of," said the angel with a certain embarrassment of asking Goku for that. Goku said, Well, since you need my help, I will help you. After all, I don't want the 6th universe to be destroyed by this evil energy. And also, if this evil energy destroys the 6th universe, it could pass to the other universes, and this could end up destroying all 12. That is, if we don't end it soon. So I'm helping you and at the same time solving a problem that I would possibly have to solve in the future. So solving it now is my best option. Besides, what I don't want is that people like Hit, Kaba, Cauliflower, and Kale to lose their lives because of this evil energy," said the hybrid before looking at his wife who really didn't like seeing her husband talking about two Saiyans, something that Goku noticed and just sighed when he saw that his wife was still jealous. Wiz said, Since we've decided what we're going to do, then we should go to the 6th universe quickly, because apparently Mr. Goku has his own things to do, and so do I. Even more so now that Mr. Beerus has decided to train not to depend on Goku again," said the angel, standing up and looking at Goku, who was happy to know that Beerus decided to get stronger, so as not to be almost killed by anyone again. Goku said, Since we've decided what we're going to do at this point, let's go now, because I have to go visit Pan, because I promised I'd teach her how to transform into Super Saiyan 3 and Pan is already mad at me for cancelling it. And I don't want to irritate my granddaughter any more than she already is," said the Saiyan revealing some of the family problems. Vado said, Let's go. Don't worry. Miss Chi Chi will bring your husband safely, even though he doesn't need protection. Vado said before bowing slightly to Chi Chi who did the same thing, and then they left the house and went to the 6th universe using an energy pillar. In the 6th universe, Currently in the 6th universe, it was possible to see Goku and his group arriving at the place where all 7 Super Dragon Balls were held, which were trapped by chains made of pure energy. When he got there, Goku began to look at the Super Dragon Balls, which were almost completely black, and even though he was very close to the evil energy, it did not affect Goku as his pure energy purified the evil energy the moment it touched him. Goku said, Apparently this is very serious here. Well, let's start doing that said the Saiyan, who soon concentrated his energy in his hands, and shot towards the spears to purify them. But the moment he stopped purifying them, the Super Dragon Balls became corrupted again, and now they were almost completely corrupted. Goku said, Instead of purifying the Dragon Balls, I only corrupted them even more after that. How could I solve this problem? said the Saiyan while looking at the spears, until he had a really crazy idea. But it was the only thing he was thinking about at that moment. Goku concentrated and then began to speak in the language of the gods, and seconds later the spheres glowed in a purple tone, and began to come together to invoke Super Shenron. At that moment, Goku used his power and transformed into pure energy, and went to the spheres entering into the great light that had formed, and moments later Vados and Wiz saw that Goku was different. He was completely golden, with two large pairs of golden wings on his back, and his Saiyan tail ended up becoming a great golden dragon tail. Goku had fused with Super Shenron himself, 
and when he opened his eyes, they were the same color as Super Shenron's eyes. Vados and Whis were shocked when they saw what had happened and what Goku had done. Before the angels could question what Goku had done, he began to release golden energy from his wings, an energy that began to purify the evil energy that was around him. So Goku began to fly through the sixth universe at a speed greater than that of light, and in a few minutes Goku had already managed to fly and purify the entire sixth universe. After his mission was accomplished, Goku's body glowed brightly, and then the seven Super Dragon Balls appeared around him and they were all purified, and Goku was already in his original form. It didn't take long for the Super Dragon Balls to begin, to divide going to all sides of the sixth and seventh universes. Goku said, it seems that everything went well in the end. And before you ask me, I summoned Super Shenron and temporarily fused with his power and purified the entire universe. So now that I have done what was asked of me, I will return home, because after that I need several hours of sleep and a lot of food. Goku spoke breathlessly, showing that joining the power of Super Shenron generated great physical exhaustion. With that, we'll end today's video. If you want to see the continuation of this incredible story, leave a lot of likes in the video and comment. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on another day, guys.